So for today's video, I set myself the task to make a top every day of the week. And in my recent Summer Trends video, I run through a lot of things that I'm currently obsessed with and I really wanted to actually make some of them to add to my wardrobe. For this video, you'll see some ribbon and mesh stuff because that is what I'm definitely most obsessed with at the moment. And I do have all the finished pieces ready here. So this is everything that I made in the last week. In terms of references and inspiration behind them, I was looking for projects that can be quick and easy to make, projects that I can complete within a day. So I was looking for crochet tops because I find them the quickest to work up and knit pieces that I can make on either my Centro knitting machine or my flatbed knitting machine. So I ended up choosing a couple crochet designs. One of them is a raglan jumper. One of them is like a granny stitch vest. And then the other three tops have all been made on my knitting machine. One of them is a bandeau top that I made on my Centro. And then two of them I made on my flatbed knitting machine. One of them is just a simple mesh long sleeve top. And then another one has a really lovely ribbon design around the neck. So let's go straight in with the first top that I made. So starting with the bandeau top, I've got my Centro here and I've got a bunch of scrap yarn that I'm gonna use up for this top. And I'm just gonna work it in the round and change the colors as I go, how I feel, and just sort of wing it. You wanna set your machine to the tube setting. And then this is all the yarn that I will be using. It's just a load of scrap yarn. And yeah, I'm just gonna alternate all the different colors to make a fun stripy pattern. Time to do the first colour swap. This is what we've got. It's a long tube, but I think it is quite stretchy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to finish off the top and the bottom edge. I'm going to just give it a loose uh, crochet stitch, I'd say, and then the first top's done. So I'm just going to add the yarn to my needle and thread it through, and then I'll cast on the desired stitches that I need. So I've knit all the rows, I've knit 200 rows, I believe. And now I am ready to cast off my project. So I'll just do a loose cast off so it's not too tight on the shoulder seams. I have a few different instruction books that came with the knitting machine that I bought and I just went through them, but these two don't have anything on sort of shaping the arms. However, in here I found a little hack or little guide on how to measure the arm length and they sort of illustrated it here so you measure how long the arm would be and I guess this you can just knit in or I would just knit this as a rectangle here however long this is going to be and then this you measure separately and add on and this bit I believe is then where I decrease sort of on the sides so I'm going to try and illustrate it here, 
how I'm going to do the arm. So I'm going to just knit a straight like rectangle and then create sort of a dome here for the shoulder seams. So I'm gonna try and decrease here and here. These are all the finished panels. So we have just two rectangles, which will be for the body, the front and the back. And this is how the arms turned out. And you can see this is where I sort of decreased the sides. I'll try and show it on both here as well. So we'll see how that works, but when I'm holding it against my arm, I can sort of imagine it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to steam all the panels so they're not so shriveled up together and then it will be much easier to imagine how the pieces will fit together. So let's do that now. This is such a good example why steaming is so important. This is after and this is before. Not just the fact that it's all crinkled, but I wish you could feel the difference in the texture. I think you can almost see it a little bit. The stitches here are so much more relaxed and these are just a bit uneven and tight together. So this is really soft and this is a bit more coarse. So if you ever struggle with your pieces not looking the way you want them to, steam them. Just use a normal iron, it doesn't matter. You don't need a steamer like that. But yeah, it's like my favorite part of the entire process. You can also now really see the shape that I created for the sleeve. So it kind of goes in at the top. Now that I've steamed all the pieces, I'm just gonna sew the arms together, the shoulders together and the sides as well. And then we're done. These are all the colors and all the yarn I'm gonna be using for my crochet jumper. There's a lot of blues and a few sort of pink tones. So hopefully that there'll be enough variation. And then I'm just using a 4.5 millimeter hook. So now I'm just gonna follow the neckline to make the raglan pattern. And I'm working in triple crochet. So hopefully that should help me work up the jump it pretty quickly. So this is how the cr triple crochets are looking so far. At this point, it was pretty late in the evening, but I decided to work on my fourth project, which is the granny stitch vest. And surprisingly, it worked up really quickly. I do always find that granny squares work up quite quickly in general anyways. So that's why they're one of my like favorite things to work on and something that I do always encourage beginners to work on as well. Um, this is the yarn I'm using by the way, it's called Lashy Colours by Lamy and I got a bunch of it on eBay if anyone is interested in using that yarn as well. So here I just have those two panels ready and I just connected it. Um, I worked on connecting the sides and then worked my way around at the bottom and added little straps and I think what made it all come together really nicely is the little finishing around the edges as well. For the next top I'm going to switch back to the panel setting and then I'm going to cast on the entirety 
uh, of stitches that there are, I think, what, it's like 48 or something it's meant to be. Um, and then I'm going to go back and forth until I feel like I have the length that I need. So my machine isn't really taking to the yarn that I'm using, so I'm going to just cast everything off again or take everything off. And I think I'm going to knit this by hand instead so I can get a more even and consistent look. Currently what's happening is that all my stitches are just dropping. But it's okay, it was worth a try and... We'll just do it by hand. But just after knitting a few rows, I realised this also wasn't really what I was trying to go for. And it was just a little bit too meshy and gappy. So I decided it was just time to go for a different yarn. And I chose this fluffy sort of brown gradient yarn, which I again got second hand. And in hindsight now, it does make so much more sense to use this yarn. I needed something fluffier that can sort of fill in the meshy stitches a little bit. So here I am casting it on to the needles again, but again, after a few rows, it just really wasn't it. So it was time to just go back to my knitting machine and cast it on there. I started by making a couple little swatches, just using different tensions to figure out exactly how many stitches I'd need to cast on. I always find this really helpful, especially because I'm using secondhand yarn. I don't have a lot of knowledge and information about the exact fiber. So by just making a swatch, you can sort of figure out how the piece will end up looking um, once everything is finished. And then it was just time to knit all the rows. This is a pretty straightforward process. I believe I ended up knitting about 200 rows, I could be wrong, and then I just do what I always do. I cast off with a stretchy bind off so the piece will lie nice and flat. I did the same for the front panel and made a little v-neck for that and just made two long strings for the bows as well to be added to the piece. I finally finished all my pieces for the last top. So we have the back panel, the front panel with the v-neck and then we have the two bows which will be tied together around the neck. So I just need to seam the shoulders and the sides together and attach the bows and then we are done. And then I can finally show all of the pieces that I've made this week. Okay, so this is the first top that I made and it's the bandeau knit top that I made on my centro and I surprisingly like this a lot more than I thought I would. When I took it off the machine I really wasn't sure how this is going to turn out because it was really long, really stretched out, it didn't look like it was going to fit and the stitches were all super uneven because I did use scrap yarn, the weight of the yarn was just so different but I tried it on and I was obsessed with it. So then I crocheted along the top and the bottom to finish off the seams and blocked it, steamed it, and now it's way too tight. I don't know what happened, but you can see how stretched out the stitches are. I mean, they are meant to just be like the ones down here. Not sure what happened. Uh, it was really cute before it was so tight. I couldn't wear this because I can barely breathe, but it does look really really cute i love the stripes and i'm definitely going to make another one like this but i wonder if instead of knitting in the tube setting i will knit in the panel setting so then i can make it a bit bigger but i guess the benefit of knitting in the tube is that all your colors will be the same all around whereas if you were to knit in the panels unless you count how many stitches you do with each color the stripes will be different from the front to the back, but either I'm just going to embrace the colour block or maybe I will try a different yarn and knit in the tube setting. I wonder if I should have just done a different finishing for the top and the bottom so it's easier to put on, but I do think it's got something to do with the way I maybe steamed the piece and maybe the steam was too hot which made it shrink. I don't know if that's a thing that happens, um, but it's the only explanation that I can think of. But overall, this is such a cute little project and it's great to use up all your scrap yarn as well. So success 
on that one. I feel like I'm just going to be repeating myself for all of these projects, but again, this turned out so much cuter than I expected it to. And the way I made the shoulders, I can't even begin to express how obsessed I am. For ages, ever since having my knitting machine, I would always only make my pieces in rectangles. So I'd make a rectangle for the front and the back, like I did for this top. And then the arms I would also make into rectangles. That's an easy, quick fix, I think, to create pieces, but I have recently thought it would be so much nicer if I taught myself how to make actual shoulder shapes. So my pieces would just be a bit more body fitted. And I kind of winged it, freestyled it on my machine and it turned out so well. The fit of this is so much better than anything that I've made before. I think I could have elevated it even more if I then also created a decrease at the top of my front and back panel. So then the shoulders would have fitted in perfectly here. But even like this, it just looks so, so, so nice. I also really like the little gap that is created by just simply seaming the sides up until here and not going all the way to the bottom. I kind of wish I did it with the arms as well to match the sides, but I still really like it like this. And it's such a cute little basic. I think this is also the perfect top for when you do want to wear basic but you want to kind of elevate it a little bit and that's the perfect shirt for that again 10 out of 10. the next thing that i made is this raglan crochet jumper and it turned out so 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 cute it's the second time i tried raglan crochet and this turned out a lot better than the first project that i made but yeah essentially as you saw i just followed the raglan pattern and then made my way down it's a nice sort of cropped length. I love all the different colours that I use and this yarn is super cosy. Again, this is a great project for using up scraps, which is what I did and it worked up so nicely. You can see here all the different textures and the triple crochet stitch that I used worked up quite nicely as well. So it's nice and meshy, but still has a good amount of coverage as well. I'll definitely be making more of these raglan jumpers. They are so much fun to work up. And again, super happy with this outcome. Now this crochet vest. Are we seeing this? It's honestly so, so, so much better than what I hoped it would look like. I'm literally obsessed. The colours that I chose work so well with this design. It gives like a 70s sort of vibe. And I also love the little details that I added around the edge. You can see them a little bit better here as well. I honestly thought about just making another one straight away. I have so many different colours of this yarn and I just love it. I can really see this being worn in the winter or autumn over like a nice blouse or shirt just because the yarn is quite warm so this wouldn't be a summer top it could have been if i used cotton yarn but this over like a big collar so cute i can i can see that come together i truly did save the best till last this top i can't even express how much i love it it turned out exactly the way i wanted it to Despite the struggles I had with it at the start, we got there in the end and I'm lost for words. It is so cute and so perfect. The ribbon detail and the little v-neck underneath, perfect. Also, I'm not always a huge fan of v-necks, but with the little bow, it then covers it up. And also the cute little sleeves here, which aren't even sleeves, they're just from knitting it slightly larger and then it sort of fits around your shoulders. I I can't, I can't even express how much I love this. Like the other one, this is so nice and simple and minimalistic and such a good basic, but elevated. So I can so see myself wearing this out for like drinks when I want to be comfortable and not super dressed up, but still have something that stands out. And this is perfect for that. I'm definitely going to be making this in tons of other colors because it is just so cute. But yeah, overall this challenge of making five tops in a week has been so, so, so much fun. It's been a bit stressful at times because I didn't think I'd finish in time, but most of the things I ended up making, I probably wouldn't have made otherwise, apart from maybe the crochet raglan jumper, but everything else has been sat on my like wish list or inspiration list for such a long time like this. I probably otherwise would have never felt encouraged enough to try it 
And here we are, it's my favorite piece out of the whole project. I would love to brainstorm another challenge similar to this, which might encourage me to make something different that otherwise I might not end up making. I hope you like the pieces that I made. I'm completely obsessed with them. So yeah, thank you so much for watching.